Welcome to the last cast segment. <laughs> Neil Gerline here. We just wrapped up the radio show. We're talking a lot about steelhead fishing. Hatchery steelhead are starting to bump into our rivers here on the west side. A lot of ways to catch those steelhead. One technique in particular is fishing a yarny. You know, we get pretty technical with a lot of this stuff. This is the most simple way you can catch steelhead. i tell you what, these yarnies are deadly effective. Why don't you tell us about how to rig up one of these and, and what, what do you got here anyway? Uh, pretty simple to make. Nelson's holding on to one of them there. It's a nice little multicolor pattern in between two number four Mustad side drifting hooks. And really all it takes is uh, two, three, four different colors of yarn put together. And the reason I do that, steelhead are vi very uh, visually stimulated. And so when I can utilize multiple colors and create color contrast in a single presentation, that's what I'm going for. And, and actually I even mix in one of these strains of yarn and most of these is UV patterns. So you got actually some UV in the yarn. Who makes that UV yarn now? Uh, steelhead stalkers do, but okay. also uh, a couple other companies You'll see it hanging there on the shelf if they got the little sticker that says UV. And I'm actually kind of surprised. I put my black light to a lot of different yarn, and you'd be amazed how many are UV that aren't even marked UV. Hmm. So you find that a lot of your yarn actually is UV without knowing it. Color-wise, you know, you mentioned doing different colors, but you're mm -hmm. a lot of oranges and pinks. You got a cerise in there. Yeah, some yeah. of your some of your peach. champagne and your peach. Champagne. Berry pink. Yeah, champagne and peach okay. and uh, cerise. Now what's interesting is you put these under the black light and you'll see the photo if you get on our Facebook page. I put that up just to show the contrast. What is uh, actually orange in natural light under black light turns completely purple. Hmm. What is cerise here on this spool under black light turns bright, vibrant orange. So you just never know really what color you're dropping down in the depths of the water, what's actually going to show to the fish. Yarn's been a staple for steelheaders for years. And, and one of the, a couple of reasons for it. Number one, it, it's absorbent. It'll hold the scent that you place on it. But number two, they get, they get something like this in their mouth, steelhead, with their palatine teeth, which are, which are teeth on top of their mouth, right. and on their tongue. It tangles in the yarn gives it yeah. just another way for the bite to get transmitted to you and, and swing on it. But I, I noticed, Dwayne, that you have this as a separate ball in between these two hooks, and a lot of yarny presentations are actually tied into the knot itself. So this is just kind of another evolution of using yarn, and, and, and I can see this be deadly effective. I, I'd like to swing a few of these myself. Well, yeah, well, let's talk about how you tie that up yeah. real quick. Okay. And then I want to talk about one river condition where these absolutely will outfish in it. Right. So let's talk about how you tie the these way up. I make these because yeah the old easy go to is just simply put two or three different colors of yarn in your egg loop, cut them off and fluff them up and go with that. But you know eventually those come out and you got to replace them. So I actually take three or four strands of yarn, lay them together every about inch and a half. I'm just taking my magic thread that we wrap our plugs with, you know. And, yeah. and I take that really thin elastic magic thread and I do about 8, 10, 12 whips around that thing and just break it off as we showed in our quick fish video. You don't need to tie that stuff in knots. You're it, talking about that rubber stretchy, yes, it's the called stretchy spider thread. Spider thread. Yeah. And yeah. it binds and wraps on itself and it secures and it's, no, it's so simple it's ridiculous. And, and so you're about every inch and a half and you cut those off as you, you know, you wrap five or six of them in a line, just cut them kind of pull them apart, fluff them, and you trim them into a ball. Now, when I wrap that center, it's actually a nice uh, solid core inside this thing, and it's really easy to tie on my, my number four side drift hook, take a needle, and uh, thread that leader through the center core of that ball, slide it on down there, tie the top hook on. Now that thing, and like you mentioned, Nelson, with the teeth and the ability of that yarn to get in there, those hooks in that mouth, that thing but is not coming these, off. These are so effective now. We're, we're seeing on some of our, some of our larger streams the, the, the fact that these are actually replacing the use of the bait. The Calus River? Yeah. yeah. Guys You're, are fishing those with a with a, with an easy egg on there, yep. and they're just schwacking the And, and the cool so. thing about this is you don't have to change your game plan when you start fishing selective rules on yeah. a stream. Yeah. Those, no. those areas that, that preclude, or preclude the use of bait and right. scent, you right. can still use your yarn. So one river condition where these really where these really shine, they'll hit them in any river condition, but when the right. water gets really, really, really cold, yes, and you felt that bite before, if you're used to fishing eggs, you feel that bite, it's just a real soft, spongy. They're just coming up and they're just puffing at your eggs. They're so lethargic, mm -hmm. they really don't want to eat those eggs. We're like, all right, it's here, I'm gonna chew on it a little bit. But then, then they're gone. They give yep. you a couple little chomps, they're gone. Tell you what, they chomp on this thing, you're gonna hook those fish. Yeah, exactly. and, and if you're fishing in those really, really cold winter conditions that we get sometimes here in December, January, that's a, the that's a time when that yarny can yep. really shine. The other thing you do, you can set them up, Posky's nectar, you can put some shrimp oil on mm -hmm. there, a little anise and that can make them fish a little better. Yeah, so. a little scent on those when you're in that uh, time frame when you can use bait or scents is very, very effective. I like to 
And I wrote that blog on my NAC, Nectar Anise Krill, my number one combination actually for winter on steelhead. No sulfites in there, all natural. And all you do is dump a little scent or oil in a tray and just dip that thing in there every once in a while. Unless you're using a good oil that stays on. Yeah. But you know, that right there is going to milk out and send a send an egg scent trail, just like eggs. Now you got the best of everything. You got, you got scent, scent, you got, you got color, you got it grabs their teeth. You know, and these are cheap too. So I mean, easy to make and they're durable and they yeah. fish well and uh, make yourself up some because you're going to have good success. There you go. I think you need to write a blog on how to make these. That's it. Probably I'll will. That out right. It's week. yarny time. All right, yeah. let's do it. Thanks for watching the last cast segment here. Go out, take some of these yarnies out to the river, swag some steelhead, and we'll see you next week.